scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You'll never be the same. You may not know what the presence of God does to a man. The presence soaks. And every fiber of your cell receives of that glorious presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we declare that we are the people who are serious with you. We mean business every time we show up. We are not interested in just having a form of godliness, but that we want to be so close to you, so close. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God. Oh, that you will know the passion in my heart for you to walk with the Holy Spirit. That you will be a testament of what his presence can do. If you will quit chasing healing and power and anointing. You will find it all in his presence. You will find it in his presence. The Bible says blessed are they that hunger and thirst. He didn't say blessed are they that eat blessed are they that hunger and thirst for they shall be filled holy spirit i love you with the whole of my heart you anointed me to reveal you to the world how can one reveal such an awesome person the paracletos stand by the advocate the strengthener the comforter the one who makes men wonders the governor of my father's kingdom who but you is able to do wonders you're the eternal spirit of the living God when the heavens and the earth were being created, you were there. The one who turned the word into flesh and planted him in the womb of a virgin. The one who anointed the apostles and the prophets of old. The one who walks with koinonia. The secret of the grace. The secret of the impact the secret the one the bible calls the blessing holy spirit beyond tongues beyond gifts that you will reveal yourself to your people this platform is supposed to draw men and women into a depth of intimacy 
if we do not know you what message do we have to the world lord we don't want to join many people just making noise we do not want to talk about a god we do not know that he will help us know the word that he will help us know jesus for when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you in all truth he will teach you all scripture was inspired by him he is the holy ghost the blessed third person of the trinity who reveals jesus to the church and it is in partnership with him that the bride can say come it's only the spirit and the bride that tells the words to come for your awesome presence we thank you sickness cannot stand in his presence demonic oppression cannot stand everything that does not look like heaven cannot stand this is the secret of freedom and you shall intercourse with the truth and the product of that intercourse is freedom thank you thank you holy spirit i am nothing without you i know this absolutely nothing without you koinonia is nothing without you ENI is nothing without you. Our gifts are only empty gongs without you. Our knowledge of scripture is vain without your breath. You are the only one who can cause true transformation in the hearts of men. Tonight we are yielding to you. And we are walking in your love. Blessed Holy Spirit. You are not a wind. You are not a bird. You're not fire. You're not a candlestick. You are God. You are a real person that seeks to be known. Oh Lord, that you cause our eyes to see you and know you. That the product of our intimacy with you will cause us to shake the world. Thank you. just one minute I like it to just say Holy Spirit my heart is open just pray a prayer in one minute you must be an unbeliever to be in this kind of presence and not be open to the Spirit he's seeking a generation of men with whom he can use you don't need to be qualified, you just need to be available. What we have done tonight is so vital to our spiritual growth. For this is the rest and the refreshing. This is what prayer is. get another handkerchief i'll be glad if i can have one hallelujah listen brothers and sisters let me tell you something god desires men and women who will be vessels that will carry his glory thank you it's not looking for preachers there are enough preachers in Zaria. There are enough preachers in Nigeria. Apostles, prophets.
teach us. There are many people who want to walk for God, but very few people want to walk with Him. And God is seeking men who will walk with Him and know Him. Can I tell you something? If you will pay the price to know Him, He will make your life an awesome wonder. I cannot tell you this enough. He's not lying. If you will pay the price to take him seriously. If you stop chasing after many things and seek him, you will find everything you need. Please be seated. God bless you. if you don't have his presence listen to me sorry for those of you standing hallelujah you can sit anywhere you want to sit please if you want to sit on stage and you think you're comfortable and you will not be ashamed come on hallelujah there are a few chairs here I don't know if we can help the people just keep it anywhere all right we are excellent people but not foolish people when the presence of God is there let people just sit if you want to sit on the floor remove your shoes keep it on the floor and sit down take the seat and give them you know if you cannot sit on the floor that's where we were before we came here there's carpet in the auditorium don't break the stools please make sure you don't break the stools see his glory i see his glory i see his glory come down hallelujah i believe that there are four things that the holy spirit is emphasizing to the body of christ Please let me have your attention. I believe that there are four things that the Spirit of God. There are chairs here. Please come sit down. Just sit anywhere. Sit here. The choir people are standing. So some of you come and sit if you want to. Make yourself comfortable. Don't feel afraid. Don't feel intimidated. We need to get the word into you. Just sit anywhere. Scatter yourselves around. Be very comfortable. Don't feel intimidated at all. We are not so organized as to organize God out of our meeting. Hallelujah. I believe that every true ministry that listens to the voice of the Holy Spirit should be emphasizing four things. Number one, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. There is a need for the revelation of the person of the Holy Spirit to the body of Christ. The Spirit-filled life. The Spirit-led life. Hallelujah. This is one of the major emphasis of the Holy Spirit in this season. The Spirit-filled life. That's why we teach on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We teach on yielding to the Spirit. Because the Bible says it is they that are led by the Spirit. They are the sons of God. Hallelujah. So the Spirit filled life. The revelation of the Holy Spirit is the greatest secret we will need for the journey ahead. That's why we teach you about staying filled. We teach about tongues and the ministry of the Holy Spirit yielding to the anointing yielding to the spirit we teach you on discernment 
flowing in the gift of the spirit that aspect that dimension of teaching must be emphasized in the body number two is a kingdom life as a second emphasis i believe that the holy spirit is bringing to the body the kingdom life that you understand the structure and the build up of the kingdom you understand the nature and the character of the king you understand the power of the kingdom he said for thine is the kingdom the power of that kingdom and the glory of that kingdom so we need an emphasis of the teaching of the kingdom we need to know the principles please if you're writing write this this is so important the principles of the kingdom there is no hope for any christian in the days to come who does not understand the principles of the kingdom i assure you there is no hope you can be born again but you will receive a root shock number three leadership leadership this is an emphasis that the body of christ must receive the principles of leadership do you realize that the fivefold ministry was first an administrative leadership position even before individual ministries the church of christ needs leaders we need leaders we have men of god we have very few leaders we need leaders the job of leaders is to lead god's people hallelujah the difference between a leader and a boss is this a boss tells you go and do it but a leader create patterns with his life the word leader comes from the word lead hallelujah we need leaders in the body of christ not noisemakers leaders men who understand the principles of kingdom leadership the ability to guide the body and help them harness their potentials and prepare them as the army of god this will take an understanding of leadership there are very few people there are very few teachings in the body of christ on leadership that's why we have a lawless body because there are no leaders listen can i tell you something the first leader in the bible failed and that's what is costing the world trouble today the first leader was adam god gave him eve and the garden to take care of failure in leadership can cost a generation are you listening to me nigeria is suffering today not because there are no mineral resources it's failure in leadership every time a system fails god attacks the leaders that's why the bible says strike the shepherd satan does not need to strike the sheep strike the shepherd and the sheep the word shepherd is the word pastor strike the leaders if you have blind and insensitive leaders what do you expect a blind and insensitive congregation hallelujah if you have carnal and self-driven leaders listen the, the 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 issue of leadership is very important because the anointing that flows from the people oftentimes comes as an overflow of that which god gives the leaders and can i tell you something the spirit of a leader can be corrupt you can receive an anointing for healing from a leader at the same time receive the spirit of lust that's why a leader transfers the overflow of what he has are you listening to me this is the reason why leaders will be judged very strictly by god because you you cannot transfer a wrong spirit to god's people hallelujah the church of christ is confused today because of the teachings they have received from all kinds of people 
sometimes people send text messages to me and say sir a man of god said this and when when of course i understand everybody has areas we are still pressing towards perfection but there are certain teachings that have misled the body one sermon can lead a whole congregation into error one sermon you know why because a leader stands as a mentor as a model as a pattern so people want to become like who they see and then many people do not understand the burden of leadership we only know the glory of leadership that you must there are some things in your life that may not matter but are not necessary because you are a leader hallelujah we need kingdom leaders in the body we have many pastors we have many people we don't need more people raising crutches we have many but what we need is patterns number four the fourth emphasis of the holy spirit that i believe that god is communicating is on the issue of financial prosperity hallelujah it's very very important without money you cannot finance the gospel without money souls will be saved souls will not be saved without money people will die hungry hallelujah one of the greatest successes of satan before now is to mislead the body to trivialize the importance of finances zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 hey, i'm not teaching on finances i'm just showing you the four emphasis to the point that every time a sermon is raised over finances we close ourselves with some religious feeling as though we are just heaven and all of that but anything that is not taught the body will not have faith for it and if they do not have faith for it they will not get it listen to me i am concerned about the finances of people because i have passion for it i am very concerned about the hundreds of graduates that will be getting out of abu in the next few weeks many of you are already afraid you don't even know what else to do with your life hallelujah I heard of someone who changed his result to go for NYC two times so that he can get the allowance. You may laugh about it now. It looks silly. Hallelujah. There are more ladies going into prostitution every day. Tongue-talking ladies. Some of them were leaders in their fellowships. There are more armed robbers every day ravaging our cities killing people maiming people there are more jobless people every day the record is increasing there is desperate need it has slowed down the advancement of the kingdom of god preachers have become beggars on stage every message now is money 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 you know why because there is no money everything in the church has become money there's no time to build the body again because the truth is there are needs are you listening to me there are needs the men of god want to take care of their wives and their children you want to be blessed you want to get to a point one day where you can drive a car and then not have rain and can i tell you something no matter how you pretend not to care about it a day will come you will care about it are you listening to me one of the greatest deceits of satan is to make the church trivialize this this is the fourth emphasis of the holy spirit if we continue embracing poverty we will run into trouble there is going to be big disaster that is coming i assure you i assure you i know more people who have lost their salvation 
as a result of poverty than as a result of Satan. I know more ladies who have slept with managers and directors. Go to a shrine and ask the native doctor what is the highest need that they are meeting him for. Money. We trivialize it. We talk as if it's not an issue. But then we run into trouble. Our parents have become slaves to all kinds of prophets today. They come to our house, your house. Make your father to sit down like a fool with all the knowledge he has had. Just because they want, we want money. This is August and the federal government has not released allocation. And our parents are crying and it's affecting you. The guy you said no to in January, you are considering saying yes to him tomorrow. Because of your project. More harm will be done to the body of Christ. If we do not embrace the blessings of the Lord and see the need for it. You're seated here tonight by the grace of God. You're getting blessed by the keyboard, the projector. There's nothing here that is free except the venue. So it is very important that you align with this emphasis of the spirit. Do not ever let Satan deceive you and say you are young or say I'm spiritual. My own is just heaven. You will run into more trouble than you can imagine. Prosperity gives you focus. Are you listening to me? When you are prosperous, you can focus. There are many of us, our prayer request is just money, 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 money. You go to pray for six hours and come in as if you were praying for the nations. You were crying for money. Hallelujah. There is nothing that discourages the faith of believers like money issues. Even healing does not discourage people like that. Do you know Satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church? Because if you are healed, you are healed for yourself. But when you are blessed, you are blessed for others. Hallelujah. So this is the fourth emphasis of the Holy Spirit. And it's important, very important, that we give it careful ear. The Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. These four go hand in hand. Listen, whenever one is emphasized above another, there will be trouble. Are you listening to me? When you emphasize the Holy Spirit and anointing and power above the principles and the character of the kingdom, above leadership, above the ministry of the blessings of God, there will be trouble at a point. Because when everybody is hungry to lay hands on everybody in your congregation, you will need to rewrite the book of 1 Corinthians. This was the catastrophe that made Paul to write 1 Corinthians. Everybody was flowing in the gifts of the Spirit, throwing everybody on the floor. And Paul said, hold on, we need to explain this. And he took chapters 12, 13, 14 to explain the order and the operation of the Spirit. If you teach everybody on character, the kingdom, character and the kingdom, now people know how to go and greet those who are mourning, to greet those who have problems. But you're not going to have a supernatural generation and that's a big problem because satan will soon sit in front of your congregation and help you run your service and then without leadership there will never be a means of training and raising people moses was an uncommon leader hallelujah and then without prosperity one day you come for koinonia and you just see everybody standing outside and you say what's the problem Let's say you are going to stand today. Why? Say, are we not giving offering? <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, I receive all that God has for me. By the time you get to 30 years and you are about to get married and you find out that there's no money, there's no hope of renting a house, your emphasis in the spirit will change. The things that used to matter to you will no longer matter. You'll be surprised that you are sitting down and thinking and saying, Oh Lord, your father is asking you, he said you have been going to church since you were 21. What is the fruit you have to show for it? We are dying here. 
I'm not praying in tongues. You are praying in tongues, but I'm better than you. Yes, there's no relevance of your going to church. And this is what we do not want in the body. There must be fruit. Are you listening to me? That they are driving your father out of the house and then you step in and tell them there is no problem. There is grace. And you can salvage your family from misery. There are many of our loved ones who have not been able to go to school today. Some of you are the only ones who were sent by your family members. See, if you don't have an assignment, you don't need prosperity. You really don't need it. But when there is an assignment, you desperately need the provision of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, very quickly, I'll just show you something and we'll pray. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. I had a dream this morning that changed my message. I'll not share the dream because of time. Verse 6. I want to teach us a very big secret that God has shown me in my life. And please, I want you to take it seriously. It's a powerful revelation and it's a very, very big secret. It's one of the biggest secrets of ENI. It's one of the biggest secrets of Koinonia. It's one of the biggest secrets of my life. And I'm happy that I'm having to teach it now. See, please look up. Especially for those who are preachers, who have churches and fellowships here. Can I tell you something? Every time you begin to, don't just teach your members anything you want to teach. There is a pattern that you raise people such that they become strong. Are, are you listening to me? If you carry your trouser and try to put it like shirt, are you dressing well? But is trouser required for good dressing? Are you listening to me? So it's not enough to have rema and have revelation. You must understand the order of that structure. The Bible says, ensure, speaking to Moses, that the house is built according to pattern. So it's not enough. There are certain teachings that are dangerous for believers until you have established them in certain truth. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, laying aside this basic doctrines of the laying on of hands and of baptisms and all of these things when you are building a people you must build them when you were in primary school they built you gradually is that correct when you are spelling they put h dash s and then they say fill in the blank that was a way of building you when you were doing mathematics when you say one minus two they write equal to then they create a big box for you and you write it cannot and you took first they gave you price when you come to from one or from two if they ask you one minus two and you say it cannot you are going to get zero because they will teach you a new topic called what number line i follow me now this is how it is in the spirit so we have lopsided growths in the body a believer who just got born again you are teaching him something he cannot even connect with are you following me now he cannot relate with what you are teaching him and so you see the man of god struggling but the people are not growing hallelujah then you get to a point where the people who are supposed to be walking are big children who are still crawling hallelujah paul was surprised when at a certain time the church ought to have been matured but they were still babes in the things of god and so there is need for constructive building hallelujah it's dangerous to teach people for instance on prosperity until you've taught them on purpose are you listening to me if you have not taught people on purpose and their assignment teaching people on wealth and prosperity will destroy them because the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them and that's what we have going on in the body if you teach people on the miraculous without teaching them on salvation and the priorities of god and the eternal counsel of god where is the church going to you will produce a bunch of hungry people who are looking for anybody to lay hands on have you seen all those kind of childish people around everybody just has anointing and calls you and says now i'm going to speak and the power of god will move and then you see somebody moving and I say i'll touch the person with one finger those people have been taught wrongly 
when they teach you that the purpose of the anointing is not just for show are you listening to me then you are being built according to pattern when you teach somebody on relationship and marriage without teaching the person on purpose that's a disaster now the person is going out with the lady one day you will turn and look at her and say what are we even doing confusion sets in because without vision the people perish are you listening to me you want to have a child without understanding the purpose of fatherhood the purpose of parenting see the body of christ there are courses that you study in the university you call it something 101 is that correct you study that's not all to it but that's all you need to know at that point you will meet it again maybe two or three hundred level as a continuation because it's expected that before that time you would have built on certain knowledge when you meet it you will now appreciate it are you listening to me no matter how brilliant a student is he cannot write project in 100 level even if he gets five points are you listening to me that's what happens in the body you just see somebody who got bored again two weeks now you make the person a pastor and he gets up he doesn't even know what ministry is about the person just gets up and his dream is just to get suits and he starts calling forth suits from every member and doing all kinds of things there is need for constructive building hallelujah so that we can understand what the spirit is doing i tell you something the building that is going on in this place is not haphazard topic after topic building after building sometimes you see us shift emphasis on character sometimes we shift emphasis on the anointing sometimes we shift emphasis on the kingdom sometimes we shift emphasis on the blessings of the lord prosperity and all of this we take a series on it sometimes you keep seeing us shift emphasis this is to be able to build believers so that you don't have a believer with a big head and a small body or a big hand to collect money and lack of discernment we need a the bible says the fivefold ministry was given not just to raise members that what the body will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ hallelujah are you listening to me so very quickly i'll talk on something tonight i don't know what the topic will be let's call it grace grace zechariah chapter 4 I want to teach you on the dimension of God called the grace of God. It's not really a teaching, it's an exhortation just to touch your heart. Verse 6, And he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, Let's read together, Not by, nor, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Look up. Not by what? nor by hallelujah not by might not by power but by my spirit i think this congregation is matured enough to now receive the teachings of grace the trouble with the grace message that i've always had is that you do not teach the believers the place of kingdom responsibility when you teach people the message of grace without understanding kingdom responsibility you are going to produce a lazy church because grace will look like a license for everything are you listening to me but when you teach people and bring them to the place of responsibility then the message of grace becomes useful can i tell you something there is a factor in the life of every believer called grace grace means unmerited access uncommon favor write it unmerited access on common favor access that you do not deserve results beyond your ability beyond your prayer life beyond your fasting life beyond your knowledge of the word there is a provision in the structure of the kingdom for a believer to step into more than he can do it's called the grace of god he said not by power not by might but by my spirit it says who are thou mountain verse 7 
Oh great mountain. See, look at me. There are two ways in scripture that mountains can be moved. One is by faith. Hallelujah. If thou shalt say the operation of the word of God, if thou shalt say unto this mountain, be thou what? Removed and cast into the sea. But here God is showing us another key in the spirit that equally moves mountain. He said, who art thou mountain before Zerubbabel? He said, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain. Hmm. He said, and he shall bring forth the headstone in it with shoutings of what? Grace. Grace. You get to a point in your life, brothers and sisters, where you will know that you need an extra factor beyond all that you know how to do. You know that there are certain realms if you are to step into in the spirit, it's going to be beyond your prayer life beyond your word life are you listening to me beyond you that's where the grace of god comes in hallelujah and when you understand that there is this provision in the body then it makes you appreciate god and it comforts you are you listening to me when he was talking to the church in revelation he said i know that you have little strength he said i know i am aware that your strength is small I am aware that you are trying to make sure that you walk in the reality of the righteousness of God. Are you listening to me? Isn't it comforting to know that God is aware? I am aware that although you are stubborn, you are making efforts to change. I am aware that you are making efforts to love me. There are habits you want to stop. God is saying, I am aware there is a factor called the grace. Paul speaking in 2 Corinthians. Can we turn there very quickly? 2 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 15. This is what Paul has to say about his ministry. Sorry, 1 Corinthians. That's the second. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Please catch this revelation tonight. Verse 9. I believe this is also my testimony are you ready verse 9 let's read one to read for i am the least of the apostles that i am not fit to be called an apostle because i persecuted the church of god stop paul is saying look you esteem me and call me a great apostle yes i pray in tongues more than ye all yes i do all of these things but paul is saying can i tell you the truth there is a factor in my life i will not hide from you it's called the grace of god paul said if it were by qualification i am the least of the apostles you know why because when the other apostles were working with jesus christ he was busy are you listening to me there are some of you that where you are today is the grace of god you got born again two years and you left somebody when you were drinking palm wine the people who came to preach to you you are the one who is getting them filled with the holy ghost right now when they were stoning stephen paul was still Saul. he was the one who sat down and they put the clothes the people were angry they removed their clothes so that concept of removing clothes before fighting was in the bible is a spirit they removed their clothes and paul said bring it here i'll protect it for you you must kill this guy hallelujah the grace of god let's hear what he has to say in verse 10 he said but oh i thought they were projecting it but by the grace of god are you there by the unmerited access by the favor of god i am what i am listen he said and his grace which was bestowed on me was not in vain you see where the maturity of teaching comes in he said in that i labored more than ye all he said yet yet because there are other people that labored more than me yet brothers and sisters can i tell you something 
I have seen more people that I've seen people that pray more than me. I know people who do vigils at least two times in a week. Have you seen ministries like that? I've seen ministries that fast and run marathon fastings for months. I've seen pastors and men of God that go around and beg. They beg God, they cry, they do everything. Sometimes when people send me text messages, I say, what is the secret of the anointing upon your life? Listen, when I saw Jesus Christ, I was not praying. Are you listening to me? I tell you sincerely from my heart, he just appeared to me by grace. Are you listening to me? The anointing that I walk in today, I don't know if I'm to quantify all my prayer life and my word life, if it will equate what I'm walking in today. How many of you have seen God do things in your life? That at the end of it after people clap for you you go back and you want to run away from the result you are receiving because you know that there must be another factor in that equation hallelujah there are many of you who have re you are not faithful in typing yet you don't have any financial need whatsoever it's called the grace of god are you listening to me other people start reading you resume half of the semester and you get 4.1 and somebody who had collected the handout before that semester the lecturer says is their neighbor they gave him the full course the grace of god are you listening to me somebody did malpractice in your presence you did everything the person got e you got a with all the malpractice the grace of god paul said i am what i am hear me saints of god there is a provision in the body to help the journey of a believer not to replace your operation of the of the of of, of the kingdom are you listening to me grace is not supposed to produce a lazy congregation so why do i need to pray why do i need to fast why do i need to stay with god's word when i can tap into a provision called grace if i can sit down without preparing a sermon and god will step in are you listening to me if i can do anything and come out guiltless why do i need the grace of god when you understand the grace of god you would think it's a license to disobey god that's why paul said hold on as i'm teaching you this grace message let me balance it shall we continue in sin that grace may abound because there are many erroneous messages today that stemmed out of the revelation of grace can i tell you something friends what you see in koinonia you know that is the grace of god hallelujah the grace of god it's not because the things you hear may sometimes not be spectacular however it is the grace of god when you look at the worship team you see the grace of god when you look at everything that is happening you see the grace of god the unmerited favor unmerited access paul said look i need to tell you people something i am what i am by the grace of god listen i know men of god who to get a little result a little result they will have to the kind of result that you see and trivialize in koinonia here I know how they have to travel in the spirit and press as if they are going to die and they step into a meeting and if five people fall under the anointing they go back happy it's a reward for 40 days prayer and fasting yet you come and stand on the stage and you just say lord i bless your name and you see people listen the grace of god there is a factor are you listening to me if you get so walk conscious that you forget that there is a factor that is supposed to push you the grace of god is an exclusive act of his sovereignty are you listening to me an exclusive act of his sovereignty god does it so that no man can boast sometimes when you apply too much principles and you do things it's easy for you to think it is because of what i am doing then god surpasses what you have done and tells you can you account for this one now and you know that this is but the grace of god hallelujah 
there are many of you before you had certain revelations there are people praying and organizing seminars on hearing god but before you were born again you were already seeing angels your eyes was already being opened to the realm of the spirit hallelujah what spiritual principle is responsible for that the grace of god are you listening to me what i'm sharing right now as trivial as it is there are many congregations that if the minister is talking like this you see people just carrying their bible and frowning and leaving and the person is discouraged he's saying what i'm saying is it not making sense yet another person comes up and he can sit down and be cracking jokes and as he's cracking jokes hundreds and thousands of people are trooping in and they're laughing how do you explain that brothers and sisters there is a mystery in the spirit there are it's not everything that can be explained one of it is the grace of god the grace of god this has been a revelation god taught me every time i prepare for a meeting when i finish i say lord i don't even know what your standard is for this meeting talk more of saying i have prepared enough but i know i beckon how many of you have been sitting in your room and people came that you need to teach them you didn't pray you didn't prepare that one is grace and you start talking and you check and you, you are four hours you are even jotting the revelations you are bringing how many of you have been counseling certain people and the depth of insight that comes you start comparing scriptures to scripture and at the end of it you are like ah, ah. even you you are surprised you know you can't repeat what you just did again that's why if you are talking you you just talk as if you are answering a call you quickly put your phone on record because you know it may never come again are you seeing the grace of god at work in your life a lecturer is giving everybody f you just walk to the person's office and he looks at you not because he wants anything in return he just says all right we'll do something about your result you come out and you will see d or e or upgrade everything or c or something and you just look and you are surprised your handwriting is so bad yet no lecturer has ever insulted you for it you still get a somebody writes a very neat nice handwriting and gets one for it and still get e or, or c the grace of god do you know there is a factor many people don't know that there is this factor in ministry see this is the secret of sweatless ministry sweatless ministry you live your life understanding that no matter how weak you get there is a hand to hold so you don't abuse the grace of god by not performing your responsibility but you know that every time you get to the end of the road there is a hand to hold you when you walk in that consciousness the day you step out and you see somebody that day you were not prepared in quote and then you just step out and there's a bible study in your house and they say uh we have a woman of god abigail she's going to be exhorting us and that's the person announcing to you that you preach now you are contemplating where do i start from and the whole scripture goes blank let me tell you what used to happen to me when i started out in ministry sometimes i would prepare a message very nice message even me i'll admire what i prepare five minutes to the stage the whole thing will go blank i can't even remember one scripture again i said come on lord don't play with me and now they are saying we have in our midst it's a rare privilege all the way from zaria i don't know if you celebrate the anointing while they are saying that you are struggling by yourself you are saying lord the first scripture i planned that i'll give has disappeared and when you come up suddenly you don't even know what to do then an unction come upon you suddenly you begin can i tell you something if you meet me outside koinonia i cannot quote half of the scriptures i quote on stage i assure you i only quote scriptures i can quote chapters of scripture when the grace of god comes on me it's not something i learned i don't know how it works till today the moment i handle this mic suddenly it's like the bible is open up to me that's why someone can be on stage and say there's somebody here you have headaches yeah me me that i've been praying in tongues i'm the cell leader let them know i have headache then when the person drops down you just run and come 
that person's faith may be small just lay hands on you and you even be angry because you know nothing happened there is grace and unction are you listening to me unmerited access unmerited access doors that are closing for others suddenly open up for you oh we have enjoyed this in eni the grace of god this auditorium that we are using by grace we have never had to pay one naira one naira brothers and sisters it is the grace of god i'm giving you all these testimonies to give god praise are you listening to me i shared with you where we went to lagos and a plot of land was given to us in lekki how do you explain that how do you explain that somebody is busy working up all the principles of prosperity he knows somebody just gets somebody's prayer request at a platter of gold a lady is fasting and praying very pretty lady for her husband one other lady who has been a prostitute for years just gives her life to christ and somebody just says you are the one i'll marry no matter what happens they say oh god open your eyes are you blind you say i know i will still marry like that the grace of god hallelujah you go for an interview and you have third class you are even ashamed they say which school did you go to you say a oh, guy went to school none of your business where i went to no ask me useless questions here yeah, you are not the person giving me the job all kinds of first class students are making noise suddenly they look at you and there is something they say you come where are you from give me your paper and then let me tell you something I began to see the grace of God in my life in a very fearful way. The things that people would do are not excelling. I would come and walk upon it as if it's not an issue. And one day God told me it's the grace of God. Are you listening to me? Unmerited access. I share with you these testimonies. If the ministers should share with you, everybody has fearful testimonies of the grace of God. Many of you were here when CBN came to Zaria to come and run an interview for us. I don't know anybody in CBN aside from one of our members from Jack. There are many people passing. We don't even have none of the ministers here has a complimentary card. There are many people they have printed more complimentary cards than those who produce tracks. But nobody has called them for administration. But a man of God will be sitting down quietly. And your phone is ringing and people come and say please we want you to come and bless us do you not see that this is grace the grace of god hallelujah the grace of god the favor of god paul said i am what i am by the grace of god koinonia is what it is today by the grace of almighty god there are people who hold programs on campus they even write it on the poster there will be free food <laughs> now i don't say this of course you understand my heart i'm just trying to show you the grace of god there will be free food come yet at the end of it after two hours you just see somebody strolling and say sorry is this here they are holding this rose we are sharing the grace when the grace of god when you tap into that dimension <laughs> one man of god has a ministry the name is grace dimension hallelujah when you tap into this grace are you listening to me brothers and sisters you will get more than you can ever imagine young man off your phone listen look at me hello please off your phone hmm? or go outside and answer it or put it on silent hallelujah the grace of god i know ministries and churches that have every kind of excellence you can imagine hallelujah and every member they see they snap the person because they may never see the person again they have used all kinds of publicity publicity principle including forcing you in your house they come and meet you in your house and say we are we are the evangelism unit of this ministry please you are going to come there is evening fellowship you must come to our house yet you look at another person 
and yet you see the increase of God hallelujah you look at a man of God on TV who is preaching and you cannot even hear him clearly you can't hear him clearly yet you turn and see the way people are so open to receive you see the loyalty of people to that grace and you say is it that this guy went to the, the, there's there's a man who speaks in, in tv every time <laughs> every time i watch the man i almost laugh it's so funny very very funny I, I can't even hear what he says sometimes yet that guy you cannot explain what it is there's one baba that that is on air honestly speaking when that guy finishes talking you just know that okay you were in a service and people bless you but even you you will not know what to bring you back the grace of god have you not seen people taking business proposals well dressed with their tie as they are entering they say go out walk out just don't and you see the person and then you see somebody goes with his jeans and they're even telling him ah but button up now look at your trouser eh, come and then they give him the job how do you explain certain things i'm teaching you this dimension because you need to activate it in your life there is this operation of the spirit called the unmerited access hallelujah i am what i am by the grace of god he said although this grace was not showered on me in that i labored more than ye all yet it is not i but the grace of god if you do not listen if you are going to work for every single thing you want to get in this life get said to die there is a factor called the dimension of god's grace that comes upon you hallelujah at every time we have a need a serious need and an urgent need god will always raise help us by the grace of god every time by the grace of god hallelujah we have never we have never we i i believe that we have one of the best workforce in this city in koinonia i say it with all humility the diligence of these people you wonder and say okay what are they giving you have you not seen churches that they call they say we even pay you salary we'll pay you there is an operation of god's grace that can work in your life listen i have seen men of god who walk in depths of revelation depths of revelation depths of revelation and yet every time you see these people you never you 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 sometimes you you are just broken and you say lord i give you all the praise the grace of god what his grace can do other people are trying certain things trying again and again and you just step in never take for granted when you see certain ease in your life is grace the day god takes away that grace you will be shocked hallelujah i have never struggled to flow in the spirit sometimes when i hear people with all due respect in tv teaching different ways to flow in the anointing i'm not aware of what they are talking about i really cannot even understand it's very complicated have you not seen many schools of the prophets they gather people who want to be prophets and you see how hard they make it immediately they finish you come and stand here then you try and prophesy what are you seeing you say not yet they say we all activate it somebody comes from the wilderness with no teaching whatsoever suddenly begins to see the names of people on everybody's head how do you explain that are you listening to me have you have you not seen some preachers that didn't go to school they don't have anything never read any concordance yet when you hear them you know that this insight is not from a man it must have been from god hallelujah a man is sitting down and moving you who loves god you are trying and say lord please appear for me and then he doesn't appear to you and one drunkard as he's taking the last beer then he sees jesus he says why are you doing this to me you are saying lord is this fear is this fair i'm shouting there i'm, I'm shouting in my room 10 days prayer and fasting now somebody just finished or someone who just finished cain listen we, people are crying about the voice of god 
Cain killed his brother and had the voice of God. He just finished killing his brother and he had the voice of God, Cain. He said, am I my brother's keeper? If you hear the voice of God, you say, Lord, I thank you. It's such a privilege. But Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? In other words, to hell with your voice. Hallelujah. The grace of God. Say after me, the grace of God. Giving me more that I deserve. The grace of God. When you believe in that and you activate it in your life. Before I got to know many principles on leadership, on ministry, on finances, on all of these things. I was stepping into other blessings already when i knew these principles i knew i didn't obey them so i wonder why certain anointings came the grace of god are you listening to me there is that provision for a believer where you activate the grace there are people who don't pray every day they don't do anything yet they never fall sick they don't rebuke any devil for anything they are staying in a in in a room with somebody who is a witch yet the witch never ever thinks of doing anything to the person you are not doing anything you are loved by everybody you look for trouble right now somebody is dressing well they are not looking at the person you you don't dress well and people are rushing to help you fix the dressing well and the person who is dressing well is saying look at me at least grace the grace of god I am what I am. He said, not by power, not by might. Are you listening to me now? You will get to that point in your life where it is the grace of God that will continue the journey. Are you listening to me? A ministry can sit down and be saying, okay, let's contribute and raise money for land. And somebody is sitting down and members have not even come for the ministry. Yet somebody will come and give him 10 hectares of land how do you explain that brothers and sisters a father and a mother are sitting down quietly in their house and empty and comes to beg them and say we want to put a mast are you listening to me you have read every business book you know how to read someone is sitting and they come to put a mast and they say no we'll rent our land and now they begin to rent it three hundred thousand every month for the rest of their lives Are you listening to me? You just finished school. And even before you finish, a woman meets you and says, uh, I'm going to be commissioner. Come, you'll be my personal assistant. And now you are saying, Ma, I don't know anything. You say, no problem. I'll give you the appointment and they'll train you. I want... I want you to begin to step in this level of grace. I don't like giving my testimonies because i i always like jesus christ alone being glorified but if i share with you some testimonies it will humble you that's why i always like jesus christ being exalted the grace of god hallelujah can i tell you something how does this grace come although it is a gift one of the things that the body is not taught is how this grace comes and how it is multiplied do you know that this grace can be multiplied the bible tells us that grace and peace be multiplied unto us he said how through the knowledge hallelujah the coming of this grace happens as god's gift to you but the multiplication of this grace is your reward for knowing god Every time you press into God, He leaves you with the reward of that grace. Otherwise, your pursuit for God is useless. What will be the difference between you and somebody who is not seeking God? Are you listening to me? The presence of God is the key to multiplied grace. He said, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. How? Through the knowledge. So as I press towards God, as you come here, one of the consolations of seeking God is that you walk in increased grace.
have you seen somebody come out of the presence of god and you just look at the person and you like to share your food with the person you even like the person you are driving everybody from your room but the person comes and says i'm looking for a room before the person finishes, say please i want you to come and stay here hallelujah you are struggling looking for room someone will click room of two and come and present it to somebody as a gift in your presence the grace of god grace and peace say it after me grace and peace is multiplied as i seek to know more of god this is the part that is not taught believers so we just sit down and say grace grace you can have a measure of grace but you can let me show you show you a scripture we'll soon round up quickly second peter chapter one verse two second peter sorry Aaron, i'm i'll still use you don't run hallelujah second peter chapter one if you are there say amen verse two grace and peace be multiplied unto you amplified through the knowledge through the knowledge so the more of god that you know he will leave you with this residue of grace as a testimony that you truly seek him hallelujah so you can grow in grace you can get to a point where you become a fearful wonder this is one of the greatest secrets of koinonia listen we concentrate on seeking god you know why the bible says seek first the kingdom and all other things because as you seek the kingdom that symbol of his grace will compel things to follow you as busy as we are we never try to let things occupy the place of his presence because that's the place of grace grace appears as unction grace appears as insight grace appears as the compelling power of the spirit grace appears as prosperity grace appears as the blessings of god grace and peace i'm teaching you a big secret through the knowledge suddenly you see that you are coming out of the presence of god and men seek to bless you men seek to bless you can i tell you something with all humility there is no 24 hour that passes that somebody does not bless me i say it truly every day of my life every day of my life every day of my life including today grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge through the knowledge through the knowledge grace makes life easy for you because you step into the blessings of the lord you step into the peace of the lord the word grace and peace that peace there is shalom prosperity grace the favor of god be multiplied unto you brothers and sisters can i tell you something when you begin to walk in this grace you will be afraid of yourself because the results you will begin to command will make you afraid it's not because of your age it's not because of your status are you listening to me if they ask you why and you can explain it is not yet grace if it is grace you will lack an explanation you will lack an explanation i truly know that god anointed me by grace the dimensions of the spirit that he brings sometimes i'm as amazed as the people looking the miracles that come as i'm, I'm as amazed as the people hallelujah my job is to seek his presence to seek him and suddenly i turn back and i see that there is a new level of grace it didn't say grace be added he said grace be multiplied two times four is two times two is what two times three is what two times four is what multiplication suddenly you look at a man and you see the grace of god upon his life in a way that you cannot explain the grace of god appears as increased wisdom the grace of god appears as increased insight you're just sitting down the scriptures open up unto you you cannot explain 
you cannot even explain how the scripture got open suddenly you begin to walk in unusual insights you begin to walk in levels of the anointing that you cannot explain suddenly you step into i know many prosperous people who don't know many business rules they don't even know how they got into their blessing that's why they can't teach you they tell you go to someone else to teach you honestly there are things today i cannot teach you i'll be a bad teacher if i teach you because i got it entirely by grace other people can make noise about it but for me oh my own came absolutely by grace that's why when people are talking i just keep quiet because i know my own is grace hallelujah i was sitting when someone came from mina with a letter they are organizing a minister's conference most of the prominent ministers in this country will be meeting in 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 mina hallelujah and he just brought a letter that our church argued for one week that you are going to be the speaker i said how do you explain this you want to teach people who are who gave birth to ministries that trained me and built me how do what do you say it's called grace it's not ministry experience this one is grace when you have the opportunity to teach your fathers it's called what grace 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 please i want you to believe this grace hallelujah i got a call some days ago and the person called me and he said are you joshua selman i said yes he said koinonia he said yes he said i listened to one of your message he said the lord led me to give you two plots of land I said who are you he says not important brothers and sisters how do you explain this don't say it's because you're a man of god no no this is what i want you to see it's not because of that grace say after me grace grace where god opens doors for you that you cannot explain I was sitting quietly in my house someone came with a generator that is also an inverter a very mighty gigantic generator and said it's a seed how do you explain this please i hope i don't sound arrogant i'm sorry if i do i just want you to hear these testimonies to provoke you that there is a dimension of grace that you can step into the hand of the lord the wisdom of god on common levels of insight where god will lead you to things lead you to places god will make people to serve you that you cannot explain are you listening to me every time every time you seek him grace and peace is multiplied but let me tell you when this dimension comes into your life does that mean i don't study my bible does that mean i don't stay in the presence of god does that mean i will not be diligent with the understanding of god's principles no you see why we taught that before teaching the message of grace because a lot of people just say ah it's a license for laziness so you don't read your book in class say no problem grace will speak for me no sit down and read do well are you listening to me but i want you to know that the beauty of christianity is that there is grace the grace of god the wisdom of God you're sitting down and certain blessings just step in to come and meet you listen I want you to believe what I'm sharing with you you need it in this wicked Nigeria that we live in you need the grace of God Paul said I am what I am everybody say it I am what I am by the grace of God So the more we see god many of you don't know what happens to you when you stand in this atmosphere of worship as you are standing you may not feel anything but grace is being multiplied grace the time you would have spent doing something else while you are worshiping god grace is multiplied unto you grace is multiplied never take the presence of god as a waste of time one day of favor will give you what a lifetime of labor will not give you for 430 years they were in captivity in one day they spoiled the egyptians 
they left with gold they left with everything one day are you listening to me one day of god's uncommon grace unusual grace where the hand of god comes upon your life you must believe in this grace dimension you must believe that there is a walking this is what see god planned that your life will be easy that's why he added grace without grace boy life is difficult there are people that struggle in ministry struggle in every area of life realize that as a believer you can tap into the grace of god many of our parents do not know this when they sack them they say hey, hey, life has finished hold on there is a fountain of grace there is a fountain of grace have you seen that there are many people this is why many times when god wants you to step into certain blessings he causes you to begin to worship and praise him he says forget about the problem you are multiplying grace every time you are doing that suddenly the dimension of grace you have cannot give you the result so god says leave that trouble come worship me now you are dancing you are sweating you are dancing you are sweating you don't even know what is happening the moment grace multiplied grace multiplied grace is multiplied suddenly you step out and your miracle is waiting right in front of you you cannot explain it the grace of god do you believe what i'm teaching you we're going to pray i know we're out of time but i need you to step into this dimension where your life becomes a fearful epistle of testimonies that not even you can attest to that when people hear they say it's a lie it's not true it's a lie it's not true i told god i said lord one of the things you will do in my life is to make my life an epistle of wonder there are some people who are the signs and wonders they don't do it i and the children that the lord has given me we are for signs and wonders where god will produce amazing things in your life brothers and sisters watch out you will see the operation of grace in the lives of people in this place that will make you fear are you listening to me by the grace of god we don't stage manage testimonies here you will hear testimonies that will cause you testimonies that will make you fear the grace of god you apply for a scholarship late you are the only one who will get it they say what did you do you enter the, the 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 interview hall you were not even concentrating you are sure of only 16 questions you answered correctly but you are the only person they call how can you explain this grace i give you a name to the mystery you have been seeing in your life that you cannot understand it's called the grace of god so every time you come for koinonia one of the things that god does in your life is what he multiplies grace this is one big secret in my life you never get me too busy to be out of the presence of God it has become my life I will die grace the grace of God can end one captivity captivity for years in your family in one day don't you undermine the power of grace are you listening to me somebody can come from nowhere and say he wants to marry your sister no prayer no laying on of hands no sowing of seed he just says hey, captivity someone will come and get a car key and give your father or just come and take a house build a house and say sir the lord told me this that i should sow it to you if you do not believe in this dimension of christianity you'll be in for a root shock we're going to pray rise up on your feet this is the message the lord gave me tonight the end of teachings and admonitions and buildings is that the word of god begins to produce results you are encouraged when your christianity bears fruit grace it says you will conquer the mountain at the shout of grace grace go ahead and say lord i activate your unmerited access i've gotten the things i deserve let me get the ones i do not deserve doors of ministry doors of blessings and prosperity grace and peace Paul said I am what I am pray 
you will get it god is not playing games with you pataka parata basikete rekata balada bas pray will soon be out of here but pray you are not wasting your time sekete kete balada bas raba baba baba bakata balada ba rapa toko potoko to pekete bala repete kosiara hallelujah pick your bibles deuteronomy chapter 6 let me show you something oh there is this operation in the kingdom of god deuteronomy chapter 6 i hope we have believers in this place deuteronomy chapter 6 are you there verse 10 i don't know about you but every time i see any blessing that looks like mine i will receive it with faith in my spirit people may laugh at you they will not laugh at you when you they see the result the end of every argument is results verse 10 are you there and it shall be when the lord thy god shall have brought thee into the land which is swore to your fathers to abraham to isaac and to jacob read on to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not stop is it in your bible is it in your bible it's not in your lecture note it's in the word of god that cannot fail there is that provision in the word of god next verse 11 are you ready to read one to read and houses full of good things which thou fillest not and wells dig which thou diggest not fine yards and olive trees which thou plantest not when thou shalt have eaten and food hold on wells you didn't dig well can be anything boy oil well gas well anything well is well whatever name your faith gives well don't just say these people are excited no we are serious people we are making our boast in the lord that this is the heritage of the sons in light we are not irresponsible people we are not lazy people we will not neglect the place of responsibility but can you lift up your voice tonight and speak this scripture say lord this is in your word i provoke this dimension of grace my life will be an epistle of signs wonders god will do it i assure you god will do it god will do it he told me he will do it god will do it houses you did not build you will hear fearful testimonies upon this altar jobs you did not work for the mouth of the lord has spoken it his hand will establish it prosperity beyond your imagination prosperity beyond your imagination levels of grace levels of restoration levels of his oil upon your life you will step in anointings beyond your prayer life beyond your word life invitations to minister in strange places men are blessing you by grace come on prophesy say by grace i'm lifted by grace i'm anointed by grace i prosper by grace i increase by grace i enlarge by grace pray grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace take the word of god seriously he will show himself strong he will show himself strong grace and peace grace and peace grace opportunities by grace connections by grace lifting by grace where your life will be an epitome of grace your testimony will be grace 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 unmerited access access that i do not deserve in your job promotion by grace in ministry a new level by grace 
in your home. Hallelujah. Prophesy over your family. Say, Lord, grace, what my prayer cannot do. I have tried, I have prayed, I have spoken the word. Step in. The worship team has a song that they usually sing. They say, Lord, step in. Lord, step in. Lord, step in. Concerning that marriage issue, let grace step in. Come on, try grace. Try grace and see the wonders of grace. The wonders of grace in your academics. Prophesy over your exam. Grace. Prophesy over your admission. Grace. Grace. You have read your best. You have done your best. Grace. In the name of Jesus. Grace. You write your exams by grace. You write your exams by grace. For year students, you finish by grace. Hallelujah. Listen. Without grace, your Christianity will be burdensome. Are you listening to me? You can struggle. And indeed you will struggle. But God gives his grace. You're going to pray one last prayer point. And say, Lord, I activate multiplied grace. God told us this is a year of what? Great grace. Not just grace. Great grace. See, if you don't believe it, you will keep clapping for people, giving their testimonies. Get angry and say, Lord, no matter what the issue is, grace. Multiply grace. You can know the word of God. It can open up to you by grace. Established by grace. Reigning by grace. Reigning by grace. Pray. I activate multiplied grace. I receive favor. I receive divine connections. Divine visitations. Insights. Witty inventions. I ignite the fire of grace. The fire of grace. The fire of grace. Impossible things by grace. Impossible things by grace. Sweatless victory. Sweatless victory. Sweatless victory. I tell you, sweatless victory by grace. It happens by grace. By grace. Sweatless victory by the uncommon, unusual, inexplainable, but undeniable grace. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray on behalf of everybody. We are praying as a family to the Lord. Lord, we are serious about your grace. We have tried many things by our efforts. But Lord, we want to see the grace dimension. Grace. Grace. Exams by grace. Business by grace. Leadership by grace. Sweatless ministry by grace. Sweatless exams by grace. Sweatless prosperity by grace. Uncommon unexplainable but undeniable favor by grace walk in that testimony in Jesus name I prophesy it into your life I prophesy it into your life from today you become an epitome of grace everyone who touches you touches you for grace hallelujah 
it is the grace of God that brings what we call the mystery of sufficiency he said and God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency unto all things may abound unto every good work it is the grace of God that uncovers the mystery of supply sufficiency that you cannot explain that's the grace that was activated when the cruise of oil could not run dry the mystery of sufficiency is activated by grace he said and god is able to cause all kinds of grace to abound in the name that is above all names i activate that grace for supply and sufficiency in your finances in every area of your life in the name of Jesus that by the grace of God your missing scripts will be found the mistakes in your results will be corrected your course will be waived by grace by grace by grace what a man cannot do God can do it if he cannot do it he is not God Lord, we thank you for your grace. Upon Koinonia, we command a baptism of grace. Upon ENI, we command grace. Fearful testimonies by grace. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we will give you all the glory. By grace. In the name of Jesus. If you believe this, give God a shout of praise. I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. All through this week, I'd like you to walk with that consciousness of grace. Are you listening to me? That the grace of God is at work. As you are studying your Bible, don't say I've not entered this level of the spirit. No, there is grace. Every time anybody tells you you cannot, say yes by myself. However, there is a factor. Grace. Every time you stand before any mountain, don't shout your name. Shout grace. Grace. Hallelujah. This week you will come back next Koinonia with testimonies that will make you afraid. I assure you. Mind-blowing testimonies. I want you to walk into it. My own is already happening to me. I will package them first, then I will share it one day. I will come out among those who are giving testimonies and I'll beg for 10 minutes. You must activate things in the spirit. They don't happen automatically. Grace. Are you listening to me? He and I too will have our own testimony. When you see plenty buses outside, plenty cars, plenty lands, plenty equipment from unknown people, there is a name it's called grace. Some of you will never believe it until you see it. You say, hey, and they said it. Don't be those kinds of people. Receive it and personalize it and walk in it. Lord, we give you praise for your word. We believe your word. You are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. You have spoken and you will perform. We thank you and we trust you. Our hearts will rejoice and will give you all the glory. For with all the fruits of grace, we will advance your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I appreciate the Lord. This is your first time worshiping with us. Very quickly, don't be in a hurry. There are bosses to pick you. Hallelujah. I'd like you to come out quickly. If this is your first time of worshiping with us, please appreciate them as they come. Leave your seat and come out. Very quickly, let's pray for you. We have a prayer for you. Jump gloriously. Come on, appreciate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. They have come here tonight by grace. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, 
like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.